right, thank you, Sandra. This next incredible author is one of the major voices in Chicana literature. Poet Lorna Di Cervantes is writing evokes and explores cultural difference between Mexican, Anglo, Native American, and African American lives, as well as the divides of gender and economics. Born in San Francisco in 1954 to Mexican and Native American ancestry, Cervantes was discouraged from speaking Spanish at home in an attempt to protect her from racism prevalent at the time. This loss of language and subsequent inability to fully identify with her heritage fueled her later poetry. In 1981, Cervantes published Emplumada. From the Cables of Genocide, Poems of Love and Hunger was published in, 1980, in 1991. In 2006, Cervantes published Drive, the first quartet, a selection of new poems arranged as five books and spanning two decades. The book collected work that had previously been available only in little magazines and literary journals. Martina Espada, who is also a banned book, uh, called the volume a landmark work. Cervantes has been much anthologized, most notably in multiple volumes of the Norton, Norton Anthology and has been recipient of many honors and awards, including a Lila Wallace Reader's Digest Award, the Patterson Prize for Poetry, and a Latino Literature Award. She is director of the Creative Writing Program at the University of Colorado Boulder, and I would like to welcome, I'm very honored to welcome Lorna Di Cervantes. Please welcome her to the stage. I am not as proud of any of that as I am proud to have dedicated my, most of my adult life to publishing the best Chicano literature that's out there. You look at that list of band writers, they were all in my little magazine, Mango. I remember finding a little poem about uh, these figurines that were uh, discovered in the, in the ground, in the fields, in the cornfields, uh, uh, fertility figures, by a woman named Sandra Cisneros in the first issue of Latino Magazine. And I remember reading that and thinking, God, she's got to be Chicana. She's got to be Chicana. Who else would write a poem like that? She's got to be Chicana. And so uh, at the time, I was doing the Chicano chapbook series. And uh, Gary Soto was working with me. And he loved to write rejection letters. So I put him to be the editor of that so he could write all the rejection letters. And I said, OK, your first job as editor is go find Sandra Cisneros. And he said, you know, you don't have, you, all you have is a name, you don't know where she lives, you don't have a phone number, anything. I said, Gary, see, she's a Chicana at the University of Iowa Creative Writing Program. How hard can she be to find? <laughs> and the rest, as they say, is literary history. Went on to publish the writers that are on this list. First poetry of Jimmy Santiago Baca, Alberto Rios, Ray Gonzalez. Uh, Sandra, on and on and on and on, and it just pains me to all hell, I'm sorry, but it is hell, to know that now that we have finally gotten this excellent, excellent poetry into our schools, into our curriculum, into our bookstores, into the MLA panels, on and on and on, and now they want to banish us? Now they want to banish us, take away our livelihoods, our literature. Well, I want to say that another writer that is on this list, oh, and Jose Antonio Burciaga, well, how can I forget? Jose Antonio Burciaga, Tejano, uh, published Drink Cultura, that is on the list uh, uh, back in the 70s. Another poet who is uh, uh, also on the banned book list, uh, uh, who is in the anthologies, um, is a poet who passed from San Antonio, Jose Montalvo. Jose Montalvo, the black hat poet. You may or may not know, but there is a tradition of banning Chicano poetry in San Antonio, Texas. May 28th, 1986, there was a letter from Helen Dumar, councilwoman from District 3, who was protesting the publication of, uh, was protesting money that was given to publish uh, a magazine, V. Atzlan. 
I have just finished reading the Viatslan article by Joe Montal Montalvo on page five entitled, What Sasquatch Centennial Means to Me. To say that I am disgusted and sickened to my stomach at such rot is to put it very mildly. This missile of hatred, racism, lack of historical knowledge, and downright ignorant thinking is a travesty on the public at large. How V. Atslan could allow the printing of articles such as this shows how far a minority of this type, of a minority of this type of thinking can go to create a dissension and dissatisfaction among the varied ethnicities of our community. They have done our city a great disservice. Freedom of speech notwithstanding, freedom of speech notwithstanding, I certainly will hesitate to continue city funding the Centro Cultural Atzlan, which is ultimately responsible for articles appearing in V Atzlan. To continue funding this program is to spite ourselves. We are working very hard to heal the wrongs of the past and coalesce with Americans of every ethnic background into one comprehensive society that knows no color line. To this end, we fund the to this end, we fund the ses sesquicentennial program with its educational activities and programs at the same time we are undermined by Centro Cultural Atzlan. Many heroes of the Alamo were of Mexican descent, and they too fought for America now and Texian then. And to the present, one and the same, freedom for all. Mr. Montalvo stated in his article that he could hesitate to, he would hesitate to serve this country and therefore does not deserve its freedom. To sum up, this arts agency should be cut should be cut off from all funding until they stop hate mongering that has nothing to do with art, either cultural or recognized so-called fine arts. And so uh, the magazine was never published, the program was defunded, and I published the poem. And my magazine read dirt when I was a professor of Boulder. What the Sasquatch Centennial Means to Me by Jose Montalvo. What the Sasquatch Centennial Means to Me? Well, I'll tell you what the Sasquatch Centennial means to me. To me, the Sasquatch Centennial means that Sasquatch, also known as Bigfoot, came to Texas 150 years ago. That's what the Sasquatch Centennial means to me. It also means that when Sasquatch came here, all the Mexican people said, Mi casa es tu casa. And real soon, Sasquatch took over the casa, and the horses, and the cows, and the chickens, and everything else the Mexicans had. Because you see, back then, all the Mexican ha Mexicans had was their little ranchos and farms to work on because there was no Kelly Field. <laughs> and another thing that Sasquatch did was to bring black slaves. But the Mexican people did not think that slavery was nice. And besides, the Negritos did not want to be slaves. How did the Mexicans know that blacks did not want to be slaves, you ask? Well, I'll tell you how the Mexicans knew the Negritos did not want to be slaves. You see, the black slaves would tell their white masters, and I quote, fuck off, muffa. <laughs> and we all know that those are not the words of happy slaves. The Sasquatch Centennial also means to me that 188 death wish maniacs with very serious suicidal tendencies went and got 4,000 mad Mexican soldiers pissed off and ran into the Alamo. Oh, they could have said, I'm sorry, but no. Instead, they decided to shoot the bird and the cannons, and so of course the Mexicans got nasty and kicked ass. Then the other Anglos, well, excuse me, got a little upset and waited for Santa Ana to go to Houston and see Astro World. <laughs> then, when the Mexicans were changing their underwear in case they had an accident on the roller coaster, Sam Houston captured Santa Ana at San Jacinto and made him give Texas to them. And that's when the caca hit the ceiling fan. <laughs> because ever since it's been coming down on us Mexicans, for instance, the Anglos wanted the Mexicans to go to their own schools. That's because the Mexican schools were lousy and didn't have air conditioning or brand new encyclopedias. So of course they wanted the Mexicans to go to school by ourselves, and we did. That's until the Supreme Court ordered that, Mex that schools had to be integrated. 
So then the Mexicans started to go to schools with blacks. This, of course, created problems for us because the blacks took over the basketball team. And also, también, the Anglos didn't want the Mexicans to have nice jobs, so they invented qualifications. You know, like college degrees. Since we didn't have the money to matriculate and San Antonio College didn't have food stamps, didn't take food stamps, we had to join the army so we could go to college under the GI Bill. But soon, after we started going to college, the Anglos invented seniority. And now that we have both, El Rey Gun wants us to change all that by calling it reverse discrimination. And the Sasquatch Centennial also means to me that juries made up of Anglos would send the Mexicans to prison for things Anglos would only get a $5 fine. But Gus Garcia changed all that when he told the Supreme Court that this was not nice. Y que no mas no. So now we have juries made up of Mexicans with inferiority complexes who call themselves Hispanics and send Mexicans to prison for things that Anglos get probation. And the Sasquatch Centennial also means to me that the government is always giving us Mexicans guilt trips, so we'll join the stupid army and go fight wars that only the benefit the rich. And now they want to send us to Central America and Afghanistan. But this time, we Mexicans are not going to fall for that crap. And when Uncle Sam tells us, I want you to join the army, the Mexicans are going to answer, Come caca, güey. <laughs> and that's what the Sasquatch Centennial means to me. Thank you very much. And God bless America. Oh, America? What does America mean to me? Well, that's another story. Jose Montalvo, banned in Arizona.